I'll bring a Maggie or Indomie to UK because Hello, I'm Ivor. Welcome back to my channel. And this was me punting in Cambridge three years ago. And these are the four things that I wish I should have known before going to the UK. Like how I should have just get a guy to do punting instead of self-punting like a madman. So accommodation. Um, I think I was probably the only one who decided to only find my accommodation when I arrived to the UK. I booked an Airbnb for two weeks and within that two weeks, I would go around my university while having classes. So after my class, I would just go for house hunting. It was so last minute because almost all of the accommodation were taken out because you know, September and take. Because I thought it would be a great idea to arrive in the UK and then do the house viewing like around my university so I know which one is closer to the university or whatever. And I managed to find a house that was situated in in the city center of Bristol. I mean, that was a 50-50 chance that my housemate could be psychopath or serial killer. But it turned out they're pretty chill. I mean, they haven't killed me yet. If you're looking for a housemate or a private room to be shared outside of the uni, you can check out this spareroom.co.uk because that's where I got my room in Bristol. If you want more of a studio type accommodation, you can look up to Great British Mag, which I'll talk about it later. The UK bank account. When I arrived in the UK for the first time, I didn't know what bank is good, like which one has the lower fees of international transfer. But apparently, if you want to create a bank account as an international student, you got to make an appointment with your cast letter, like offer letter from the university. I found so many different banks, and Tender, Barclays, and HSBC. And guess what? Almost all of the banks told me that I have to wait for a month to make an appointment to create a bank account as an international student. And then I ended up opening a HSBC bank account because they managed to squeeze an appointment within the two weeks time. Oh, you must be thinking, how do I pay stuff in the UK during that two weeks? I had to bring a stack of 50 pounds notes with me from Malaysia to UK. Wow, when I come to think of it, I was actually bringing 2K of British pounds cash around with me during that two weeks. Can you imagine how dangerous it was? Wait, there's actually a solution for this. I've came up with Great British Map where they have this UK survival service which is so 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 useful for international students. Let me tell you why. You can open a UK bank account even before you arrive to the UK. Wait, a UK bank account can be opened within 5 minutes before you arrive to the UK? What? Because it was my first time in the UK, I didn't know which phone care service is the best. So I went with Leica. And I just realized how crappy the Leica data package was. Actually, the gift gap, which is probably the cheapest mobile package you can get. And if you pay for the undergrad package from the UK Survival Service, you'll be getting free gift card SIM card to be sent to your home country first before you arrive to the UK. Please get a UK SIM card before you arrive to the UK because... Okay, imagine having to drag two or three big luggage that you brought at the airport. Phone has no signal and the only way to get internet is the Heathrow Wi-Fi airport. While having jet lag when you arrive at the airport. While having tons of cash with you because you couldn't open a bank account. It was a whole nightmare for me, so please do not put yourself in this situation. Subscribe to UK Survival Service. Check out the link in the description box below and here's a 10% discount for you guys. So just use the code IVA10 for 10% off. And apart from that, after you settle down in the UK nicely and a weekly e-newsletter will be sent to you for more discounts and you'll also get access to webinars like career events, like how to get our internships and how to settle down for employment. I would strongly recommend this UK survival service from Great British Bank for all those international students who are about to study in the UK. I really wish I knew about this program before I went to the UK. Having to live in Malaysia for 20 years of my life, I've never wow. lived in any any country that is colder than 30 degrees. So before I went to the UK, my family and I was like, oh shit, it's gonna be really cold out there. Buy jackets, buy warmers, buy long sleeve, buy whatever cardigan, what boots that would make you warm. When you have to do a call with your parents back in your hometown, because the first question that they're gonna ask is, what time is it in the UK now? Why you only wearing t-shirt, not cool, me? Huh, they don't know the indoor heater exists, is it? Calm down with your panic buying of winter clothes because because buying winter clothes in Malaysia is so much more expensive. There are not many nice options to choose from because the only winter clothes that you can get from is what? Cosas United, whatever. And they look very old. For example, I bought a set of long johns like a thermal innerwear. It costs like 200 to 300. You can easily get a set of these less than 20 pounds, which is like 100-ish. So don't pack a lot of things because your luggage will be overweight. 
And if you're thinking to pack your instant noodles from your hometown to UK, don't. Don't bring a Maggi or Indomie to UK because you can get it in a Chinese store. It could be slightly more expensive if you convert it, but do you think it's worth it? <laughs> Because I did that and I forgot to bring the most important thing I brought a pack of peanut white curry me with me in my luggage And I ran out of space in my luggage And when I arrived in the UK, I realized that I forgot to bring the most important thing Which is my appellator to shave my armpit hair I know you're gonna miss your food from your hometown But there are a lot of Asian stores in the UK What you need to bring is your essential electronic stuff because the charger might be different if you travel to Europe countries And I feel like the electronics in UK are so much more expensive I bought a Xiaomi power bank in UK for like 30 pounds When I bought the same exact Xiaomi power bank in Malaysia for like 3 times lesser than that That's all I got for you guys If you guys have any questions, just leave comments down below and I'll try to reply as much as possible Don't repeat the mistake I've made, subscribe to UK Survival Service <laughs>